My Friend Funny by Jade Maitre Tucker found a lizard in his garden. It was a friendly little soul. It had a sleek body that glistened like rainbows in oil and four legs that stood out like they were bookends. It was sunning itself on some bricks. When Tucker put out his finger, the little lizard seemed to nod at him. But when he tried to get the lizard to climb on his finger, the lizard seemed frightened and tried to run away. Tucker knew he wasn't dangerous to the little lizard. He was a kind boy. He wanted to feed it and give it some water to drink and play with it. Perhaps he would make it a racing track with his building blocks. Because Tucker was a nice boy who liked lizards. Surely the lizard liked him too. So Tucker moved fast. He pounced on the little lizard with his two hands. His palms were cupped so he wouldn't hurt the lizard. He could feel it fluttering beneath his palms. It wanted to escape. But it just doesn't know how nice I am, Tucker thought. After a while, the fluttering stopped and Tucker dared to peek. There was the little lizard looking warily at him from the dark cave of his hands. Its two bright eyes in the darkness were as glittery as two drops of water. Tucker gently turned his hands over and scooped the little lizard up. Now the lizard was in his hands, blinking at the big face of his new friend. Hello, said Tucker to the lizard. You must have been so bored sitting there on the grass. I've thought up some good games that a lizard would like. Shall we play? Then Tucker remembered his manners. I haven't even introduced myself. I'm Tucker, and you are... And because the lizard couldn't speak, or perhaps just had such a tiny voice that Tucker couldn't hear it, Tucker decided to give him a name. I will call you Funny. Middle name Little. So your full name is Funny Little Lizard. Don't forget it, will you? The little lizard, or should we say Funny, nodded his little head, and so Tucker thought it was decided. Funny Little Lizard was his friend. And how they would play together. But Tucker didn't quite trust Funny not to run away, so he found a box with some holes in the lid. He gave him a piece of ham and tried to make him drink some juice. Then he closed Funny in the box while he made him a racing track on his bed. It was dark and hot inside the box. Funny didn't like it. There were lots of noises that Funny didn't understand. Thumps and bumps that would slide Funny across the bottom of the box whenever Tucker moved. It was also very dark. Funny liked the sunshine. He had cold blood, and that was why he had been sunning himself when Tucker found him. All of a sudden, bright light flooded into the box. There you are, Funny, announced Tucker. Are you ready to play? Tucker reached into the box and took Funny out, but he grasped the wrong part of Funny. He held him by the tail. Now Funny had a tail that detached. Whenever it was grabbed by something, it was protection against hungry birds. So Funny's tail thought Tucker's fingers were a bird and it came right off. Tucker was surprised and upset. I'm sorry, he cried. I hope I haven't hurt you. Funny wasn't hurt, but it was a pity about his tail. It had taken him a long time to grow, and now he had no protection against the birds. Tucker grabbed Funny by the tummy, but he was stronger than he knew, and it made Funny's soft little belly hurt. He whisked him out of the box and put him on the bedspread. Funny was in Tucker's bedroom. I've made you a racetrack, exclaimed Tucker. You can run along the whole of my bedspread. Look, here is a bridge I've made with books, and here is an obstacle course I made with blocks. But Funny was weak and confused. He had lost his tail and his tummy hurt. He was dizzy from being in the box and cold from not seeing the sunshine. He sat flat on the bed and did not run towards the game that Tucker had set up for him, even when Tucker prodded him with a finger. It was then that Tucker saw something strange. Those bright little glittering eyes were now tired and dull. His gleaming oily rainbow skin was now a limp, dull grey. Tucker had found a shiny, sparkly friend, but now his friend was sick and sad. As Tucker and Funny looked at one another, Tucker realised that Funny was more healthy in the garden. It made sense. The garden had sunlight and plants and things Funny liked to eat. And in the garden... Funny did not want to run away, so he didn't need to live in a box. You didn't want to play with me at all, did you? said Tucker sadly. 
He had not thought that Fanny would be happier without him. Not when Tucker knew himself to be such a nice boy, who only wanted to be gentle and kind and help him and play together. But as nice as Tucker was, he knew now that he could not make Fanny as happy as the garden could. So Tucker let Fanny go in the garden. In his proper home, Fanny grew sparkling and gleaming again. His eyes became bright once more. His tail even began to grow back. And Tucker loved him from a distance. The end. Thank you for reading with storyberries.com. Free stories for kids.